We're excited to bring to you our worship service today. You'll be able to watch some praise and worship. And so just join with us in worshiping the Lord and then you'll learn from God's word the principles that are gonna transform your life. So sit back and enjoy the blessings that God has for you today. And so as we look today, let's see what the Bereans did when they heard the word of God in Acts chapter 17, verse 10. As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Praise God. They were searching the scriptures. Amen. How many of you are searching the scriptures on a daily basis? Amen. God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so the word of God came through the preached word. How many of you know that we all need to hear God's word preached under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Amen. So that's what we want is for the word of God to go out. And that's why we're, we're doing our broadcast. And that's why we are on the internet. That's why we're doing these things so that everybody everywhere can know that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want you to know the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this word of God is what we need. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. So you see, the word of God comes to us individually as we do our Bible studies. Each one, the Holy Spirit illuminates our understanding. Yes. Oh, yes. He begins to open up these scriptures to you. How many of you know sometimes these scriptures jump off the page? They just jump off the page and God begins to say, this is for you. And, and God begins to then apply it to your life. Amen. The Bible is given to us so that we read the word and then we act on the word. The Bible says, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. Amen. So the word of God activates faith in you. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So right now your faith is activated at a higher level. Amen. Because you're hearing the word of God. So that the Bible tells us that your faith is being built up and strengthened. That's why we have the altar service usually at the end of the preaching of the word because that's when people's faith is activated to receive something from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now it can happen during praise and worship. It can happen at various times. But when they hear the word of God, we all hear the word of God. We receive the word with gladness. Amen. We receive the engrafted word. That means that the, the ground has already been plowed to receive the word. Amen. Now, when we're praising and worshiping the Lord, the, the ground is getting to where it's opening up for the word. Amen. So there's a twofold purpose. As we worship God in spirit and in truth, we got that connection of God's presence working in us and through us. And as he's working in us and through us, now it's beginning to make us like clay in the potter's hand so that we're moldable. You see, because some of us come in a little stiff necked. Amen. I, oh, maybe that's the church down the street. Not, that's not this one. But you see, the word of God comes in and it begins to break down the barriers. The worship prepares you for that word because God knows you need a fresh word from the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We all need, give us this day our daily bread. Don't live off last weeks and last months and somebody say, well, I only come to church on Easter and Christmas. You know, and they say, I get, that does me for the whole year. Well, you know. God's got a lot more for you. Amen. And so when we hear the word of God, the word of God begins to be activated. How many of you know the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword? Piercing to the division of the soul and of the spirit of the joint and of the marrow as a discerner of the very thoughts and intents of our heart. You see, everything is open before God. It's all laid open. You know, we all... Have the ability to put on faces to other people, but God knows our hearts, doesn't he? And the word of God comes in and it goes into that area where we need the revelation applied to our life. And so the word, hallelujah, the word comes in 
And it's like a, a mighty powerful knife that can cut away the things that are damaging your life. You know, if, if I've got something that needs to be, I, I went to the doctor and he said, well, you need an operation. You got a hernia. And, and he said, so when do you want to do it? I said, as soon as you can get me in. I said, just get, get it done and get it over with. And so I went in, got, got it all done, pieced me back together. Debbie was telling me to take it easy. And this was, I think, on a Thursday or a Friday. And, and Sunday was coming. And she said, you got to get somebody else. Fill in for you, honey. You just got to just lay there and let me tend to you. Of course, I did milk that some. But anyway, come Sunday morning. Amen. I was ready to get up and preach the word of God. Amen. Jeremiah said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, I've always loved to preach the word. Somebody said, well, you got to preach Sunday. I said, no, I get to preach Sunday. Amen. I get to preach because I get to see what the word of God does to people's lives. Now, I love to be on the preaching end and I like to be on the receiving end. Hallelujah. I love the word of God, whether he's working through me or somebody else. Hallelujah. Because I got new for you. I know what will set the captives free. The anointed word of the living God will give you liberty. And when the Lord comes through with his liberty, you can rejoice and be glad. Amen. You see, people are in battles all week. They need to come in and hear the word of God. Amen. And get built up and strengthened in their walk with God. And so the Bereans, when they heard the word of God, they received it with gladness and they searched the scripture to make sure what Paul was preaching was true. And when they read the prophecies of Jesus and they saw how Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies, they said, thank God he sent you. Amen. You know, that's what I like. The churches, when I go to preach at a church, say, thank God he sent you. Amen. I don't want to. One to hand me a bus ticket and say, hit the road, Jack. <laughs> but you know, if God says preach it and somebody doesn't like it, you preach it anyway. Yeah. Amen. 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 You just preach what God says and he'll take care of the rest. Oh, yeah. He'll apply it where it's needed. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So the word comes in. And it does the surgery and it takes care of the person. And then we mend them up and we help them. Hallelujah. How many of you know the Lord is all about mending lives? So if you're struggling with something today, we're here to help bring healing into your life. Somebody was sharing something with me over the phone and, and it was healing them as they were sharing it. Many times looking eye to eye, I've talked with people and as they were sharing something with me, there was a healing going on. Or I was sharing with a friend and there's a healing going on. Because, you know, that there is something about when you're able to share what's on your heart with somebody. Amen. We can share with the Lord, you know, anytime. But sometimes God wants us to look in somebody's eyes. Amen. How many of you know the eyes are the window to the soul? Amen. And we need to have that communication on a spiritual level where it's gone beyond just, just the, the time of day and the weather. But it sometimes goes into a spiritual dimension where God begins to bring transformational principles from his word. Amen. And God gives you a word to give somebody else. Somebody was telling me the other day something that they told somebody. And I said, that was a word from the Lord. What you told them set them free. Amen. Hallelujah. It might have took it a while to sink in. You know, sometimes it, you can give somebody a word and, 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 and they might look at you funny at first. Amen. But as they begin to pray and God begins to open up the windows of heaven, then all at once they begin to say, okay, I get it, God. I get it, God. I've got to quit wrestling against you, but I've got to work with you. Amen. You see, when you begin to line up with the word, you study, you study to show yourself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. How many of us know we're all students of God's word? When you get born again, you become a student of God's word. What if you can't read? I've heard about people that couldn't read that started reading the Bible anyway, and they, they learned how to read. Amen. Because there's life in the word. 
Amen. So the word is like the seed that's sown. And when the seed gets planted and watered, then God what? Gives the increase. God wants to bring increase into your life. Isn't that good? Amen. He wants to bring some increase in my life in some spiritual dimensions. And so when I begin to get the word of God planted in me, it begins to show up. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit brings that word back to your remembrance in the moment that you need it. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad it's planted deep inside of you? Deep, way down deep. Hallelujah. I'm glad the word of God is inside of me and it's burning to get out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when the word of God is burning within you, you'll overcome obstacles. You'll begin to get, reach out because you see the word of God does not return void. It accomplishes that which God sends it out to do. Amen. So when the word of God is sown, then things, blessings are going to start flowing. You know, if you go out and, and plant a tomato and then one of these days you get to eat the fruit of that tomato, don't you? Amen. And if any of you got any in the car, I'll take some of them home with me if that's okay. <laughs> Amen. Frank, or where are you at? There he is. <laughs> Frank's been known to <laughs> give me a few good ones. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He retired from the company, though, so I'm concerned about my tomatoes. So <laughs> y'all pray for me. <laughs> I'd say, keep working, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> but praise the Lord. You see, we see the fruit of the seed as it grows. We get to enjoy the benefit. Hallelujah. Today, we think about the Bereans and they were searching the scriptures. Now, as you search the scriptures, you get gold. How many of you have ever been out digging for gold? I used to have a creek in my backyard, and, and, and we'd get back there when I was kids, and we'd go back there, and we, there were these little gold things inside the creek. Couldn't get no money for them. But they were, they, what was it? Cattails. Okay, well, I thought I was rich there for a minute, you know. <laughs> Fool's gold, okay. But it was fun still when I was a kid. We'd just get out there and play in the creek and, and just have a good time, you know. And so we were searching for something. I, I tell you what, I even still like searching for shells as I walk down the beach, you know. I've seen them a million times, but it's still fun to go searching because you never know what you're going to find. Hallelujah. How many of you know there's some jewels in the Word of God? Amen. How many of you know there's some gold in the Word of God? Hallelujah. How many of you know you'll get something that'll make you rich in the Spirit if you go and dig in the Word of God? Search. Search it out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, I heard about these divers they went off the coast of Vero Beach and found a, a where a ship had wrecked years ago and they had a bunch of gold coins and and I tell you what I thought man what, I wonder what that felt like yeah. it did feel God know it felt good amen <laughs> dragging in that gold amen well you know praise God when you go out seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened amen you see, we got to ask and it shall be given. You know, we've got to, to put things into motion. How many of you like motion? Amen. Amen. I, li I like motion. I was riding my bicycle the other day and I seen somebody said, pedaling in paradise. I thought, I'll receive that. It was only about 94, 95 degrees, but. <laughs> Amen. But I was still pedaling in paradise. Amen. But you know, as we get things in motion, amen, how many of you know where there's motion, there's momentum? Uh -huh. Amen. How many of you got that positive momentum going on in your life? Yeah. Amen. How many of you wake up in the morning saying, thank you, Jesus? I'll wake up the morning and I'll stretch out. Amen. I'll stretch out and say, thank you, Lord, for this day. Praise God. Now, it might take me 10 minutes to get to that point. Yeah. Yeah. I start off in slow motion usually. Uh -huh. You know, it's funny. I bet you that, that'd make an entertaining video. Me getting out of bed. Amen. There's only one reason I jump up out of bed. And that's if bacon's on the grill. Amen. When there's bacon on the grill, I can jump right up and say, glory to God. I'm making clear the path. I'm on my way. Amen. 
I can't help it. Amen. But when I get up, I have to sometimes slowly get up. And, and, uh, but you know what? As I see that sun coming up, I love to see the sun come up, don't you? Oh, it's rising up all around. It's the sun rising up. And it's a new day. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You say, but pastor, I don't know what the day holds. I don't know what it holds, but I know who holds me in his hands. Amen. I know that he is going to do whatever he wants to do in me and through me. I don't know what is going to come down the pipe, but I know... Oh, glory to God. Me and God makes a majority. Hallelujah. If one will put a 1,000 to flight, two will put 10,000. I believe some of you will join with me, won't you? Hallelujah. So that means we can put 10,000 enemies to flight in Jesus' name. Because I'm joining with you. And you're joining with me. And I want you to know we're going to be victorious on this journey. I'm glad he put you in my journey. Hallelujah. To enjoy walking with you in the presence of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, he binds us together. There's an old song that says, bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. Bind us together with love. You know what? That's what the love of God does. Uh Hallelujah. The presence of God can come in and set people free so that if there's been conflict and animosity it can be broken in Jesus name hallelujah you see so many people let conflicts turn into animosity and then animosity can turn into resentment and then resentment can turn into bitterness and then the Holy Ghost comes in and the word of God comes in and pulls out that root of bitterness and then you're free Woo. I tell you, I, I, I got to say amen to that myself. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Because you see, when the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, is what breaks down that stubborn streak that we can get into. Amen. The Word of God comes in through the presence of God and then breaks down the barriers. Hallelujah. You see, the presence of God in the Word is the anointing. Upon the word of God. God anoints people to preach and teach his word. Amen. So they're operating not in, the, in their own intellect. You know, God uses their, them as a vessel. But you know what? It's the Holy Spirit speaking through the vessel. Hallelujah. And when the Holy Spirit speaks through the vessel and you receive that word from heaven. Hallelujah. And it fills up your soul. Serve the Lord with gladness. Hallelujah. How many of you know it's the anointing oil is called the oil of gladness? Hallelujah. I tell you what, I need some more gladness in my life so I'll take some more anointing in my life I receive it in Jesus name Woo! hallelujah I just got a touch from glory I, when I looked up into heaven and I said I, it was like my hands are like just saying just pour out hallelujah praise the Lord I'm just a funnel in that point and you're a funnel that's one good thing about raising your hands in church just do it if you feel like it. If you, if you don't, do it anyway. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It just helps to release so that you can just open up to God. It's a, it's a way to open up to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And to let go and let God. Hallelujah. Let go of those things that have been troubling you. Let go of those things. Woo! (laughs) Hallelujah. Let the word of God come in. And it will begin to to be like a hammer. It knows how to nail the point home. Jeremiah said, your word is like a hammer. Oh, how many of you know if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. One guy said. (laughs) My first church I went and I did so much hammering. I decided I'd leave that to some of the other brothers. Amen. This morning before y'all got here, I was moving a a ladder and ladder got my finger. And uh, I tell you what, I said, y'all just excuse me a moment. (laughs) 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. But I'm still glad. Amen. Amen. Serve the Lord with gladness. The word of God comes in and it's sown, sown into the spirit. Amen. Now, it, Jesus talked about the seed, and he said some of it fell on rocky ground. That's the ground that wouldn't, it was too hard to receive it. He said some fell on ground, and the foul of the airs came in. That's when the enemy comes in. You get something from God, then the enemy says, that ain't true. Comes in and says, that doesn't apply to you. Comes in and says... This person doesn't know what you're going through. I tell you what, I think we've all been through some tough spots. That's why we can minister to each other. We can have compassion and empathy because of things we've been through. And then we can take that and then bring healing to someone else. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Bethany was talking about she had high heels on and talking about how hard it was to jump up here and said, I said, she said, you know, it's hard to do that in these high heels. And I said, I, I can imagine. And, and then somebody says, well, how can you imagine that? You never had on high heels. I said, I can only imagine. I can't understand. I can't relate. Aren't you glad to hear that? <laughs> Really can't relate to it. Uh -huh. Amen. But I can try to be understanding. See, there's some things we, we don't know. We hadn't been there and gone through that. Uh -huh. Amen. And, but we can, we can be understanding for people that are going through things. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And God will put somebody in their path many times who can relate to them. We'll have somebody come down for prayer. And I'll be praying for somebody. And I know what God's done for somebody else. And I'll say, hey, I want you to come over and minister to this person. And then even after church in conversation, say, hey, wait, they need more counseling. Amen. How many of you know that he's called wonderful counselor? Yes. The yes. mighty God, the everlasting father, yes. and the prince of peace. Yes. Amen. He is our counselor, isn't he? Yes. And he uses human counselors, whether they're professional counselors, whether they're friends, whether they're, if, if they're listening to the Holy Spirit, they can get that revelation and God can use people, hallelujah, to bring healing into people's life through the word of God. And the word of God brings correction. Amen. He said the word of God, he said, reprove, preach the word, be instant in season and out, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and patience. That, that patience is a little hard sometimes. Amen. We can preach it. But then our patience sometimes can run a little thin. Uh -huh. Amen. Oh, yes. But the Lord says, learn how to flow and more, be more patient. Have more endurance. Be more loving towards people. Don't, don't write people off so quickly. Uh -huh. Amen. Did you know God's been patient with you? Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. Has he worked with you where you were at? Uh -huh. Has he been willing to help you? along the way and we are the body of Christ and so I have a, a heart for people and I believe in loving people and helping them walk through whatever it is wherever they're at in their life amen when God binds me with somebody I'm there to love them and help them through amen and and to give them the word of God hallelujah and to see the word flourish and bring fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Hallelujah. I got news for you. The Lord loves to bless. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. Hallelujah. The blessings of the Lord are moving in your life. Hallelujah. You're operating in the word of God. The enemy, you know when the foul of the air comes to steal the blessing. And you rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. He's not going to steal my blessing. Amen. My sister-in-law was down at the beach, had a Chick-fil-A, and one of them birds came in and snatched it right out of her hands. She wasn't happy the rest of the time. <laughs> Amen. Well, the enemy will try that with you sometimes, but you just tell him, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. 
This is my Chick-fil-A. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you've got you to be willing to stand. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto yourself the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore with your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Then take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. You've got all you need. Praise God that you're able to be with us in our program today. You know, the Lord cares about what's going on in your life right now. He's speaking to your heart. So just open up and just say, God, I'm here. I'm available for whatever you have for me to do, Lord. I want you to pray this prayer with me at this time. Father God, I thank you right now that I feel your presence, I feel your spirit, I feel your love, I feel your mercy, I feel your grace. And right now, God, I know you're at work in my life. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that you're working out this situation I'm praying about. I don't know how, I don't know when, but God, I'm just trusting in you. And I know that you're working all things together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And God, that you can take whatever I'm going through. And God, you can bring something good out on the other side. Lord, and I know, God, that your healing presence is within me right now. And I receive your healing into my life. Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you that you bore those stripes on your back for my healing. And Lord, I receive your ministry into my life right now. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if you prayed this prayer today, you can look forward to seeing how God is going to open up doors. God's going to work the situations out. Just continue to trust in Him because, you know, God is a loving Heavenly Father. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, of whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. He's your God today. He is for you. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So we're praying for God's richest blessings in your life. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to invite you out to our church at the Souls Harbor Church at 451 West Helen Avenue in Punta Gorda, Florida. You know, the Lord is doing some wonderful things here as he is in many other churches. And so come and join us and you'll find an embrace. You'll find the love of God and you'll find the peace that Jesus brings. So until we speak again, We'll be praying for God's richest blessings upon you and your family. Have a great day.